If you look in Europe, now there are almost 500 uh, family businesses that are contributing and working. In Pakistan, we started with 20, 22 families and that has gone up to 31 or 32. And I'm just referring to the PIDE report that they have published. I also agree that the state culture connotation is derogative and perhaps it's not the right thing because they are contributing to the economy. I, I, economies flourish, I mean, only when businesses flourish. It's vice versa. Why businesses don't flourish in Pakistan is really a factor of, you know, a complex uh, uh, outcome of various factors. We have seen very good times in Pakistan. Uh, if we had been on that trajectory, evolution, we could have been in a different situation. Now we are in a different trajectory. We are in a trajectory of accountability and regulation and the perception is everybody is a crook. We have big businesses in Pakistan. You know, I'll give you, for example, Bahria Town is a very big business in a very big domestic sector. But generally, Pakistani uh, and generally also, if you look at uh, the example of other countries, businesses that venture overseas are usually domestic champions. So they dominate Japan first and then they go outside Japan. Every single country that has progressed has done it by selecting certain industries yes. that they promote. Even the United States, which is generally a very open country, protects, for example, the defense industry, the high-tech and microelectronics industry. Now they're trying to carve back the chip industry into the United States. So every country selects certain areas where they want to put their investment in and progress. The topic that we have been given, all those who have been invited as panelists are exception to that rule. <clears throat> they have done very well. Their businesses have flourished. And uh, so it, it would be very important to hear them out as to how they have reached where they are. But in doing so, there are a few things that we need to address and we can actually focus on those areas. Number one, we keep saying that businesses don't flourish because number one, we don't have the policies that encourage these businesses. Is it our priority or not? Businesses don't flourish in isolation. Economic issues are not only, you know, the reason is not that, the reasons are not only economic, they are deeper reasons, whether it's human behavior or political behavior. So uh, may I start with, uh, with you, and uh, you are from Nishad Junior Group, and you have built it on, you've been a CEO since 1990, I believe, why is it that we keep saying that we've been taken over by family businesses? If you look at globally, they the family businesses contribute almost 65% to the GDP. So what is this perception? Are we saying that in the uh, family businesses, do we have people, we have independent professionals who are heading it? Are we resistant to that? What are the things that contributed in making your business big? And where are we lagging behind? Because if you look, we were just having a chat in the morning and 30 years back, Pakistan was far ahead than India. Now, where are we and why are we here? Uh, thank you, Rahat. Um, I think it's important to um, really look at this situation um, from a perspective of what has helped various economies, businesses to flourish all over the world rather than just focus on what is happening or not happening in Pakistan. We all talk about these issues at various forums. But I think let's just take a step back and look at a few examples. Uh, we look at Bangladesh when it was part of Pakistan. Their GDP per capita was substantially lower than the West Pakistan. So what happened in 1971? that today their GDP per capita is more than India also. There is a wave of optimism uh, in Bangladesh and businesses are growing. Um, we look at India, 30 years ago, they had to pledge their gold, uh, send jumbo jets. 
outside of India filled with gold because they had three to six weeks left of import reserves. Uh, we can look at numerous examples all over the world. Uh, you can look at United States, you know, Texas, there are, there are cities in Texas where half the city is in Mexico and half the city is in United States of America. And the difference between these two cities or the economies of those two cities and the way people progress and the businesses of these two cities are dramatic. So it's the same people, same DNA. Uh, I think that we give too much importance to individuals and um, businesses and rules and taxes. I think there is a you know a different way countries have progressed. It's first of all uh, visionary leadership, leadership that has a vision to take an economy from point A to point B. And secondly, they are able to provide that enabling environment. Human beings are not very different. You know, there are so many examples all over the world. You look at Venezuela and Nigeria. They have one of the largest oil reserves in the world and look at their economic situation. So I think we place too much emphasis on, you know, humare yaan tel nikal aayega or Pak China friendship ho jayegi or somebody else will give us money. Nobody is going to do anything for us. We are going to do anything for Pakistan's ourselves. And what we are going to do is a set of policy, uh, a mindset of progress. Now, <clears throat> that mindset of progress in Pakistan, if you look 30 years ago, um, I remember in the early 90s when Pakistan market was first opened up, there were people coming here and investing in our economy and our stock market was booming and we were doing uh, international transactions. Um, a few of them I was also involved in, which nobody can even think or dream of doing. So what has happened is that our access to capital is completely blocked. And because of the risk factors associated with Pakistan, they can be real and perception. Um, the, the risk of Pakistan is too high and as such, the, what the return the investor demands is equally high. And at that return, most of the businesses are not going to be feasible. So <clears throat> why businesses don't flourish in Pakistan is really a factor of, you know, a complex uh, uh, outcome of various factors. We have seen very good times in Pakistan. Uh, if we had been on that trajectory, evolution, we could have been in a different situation. Now we are in a different trajectory. We are in a trajectory of accountability and regulation and the perception is everybody is a crook. So as the saying goes, you are innocent till proven guilty is exactly the opposite in Pakistan. You have to prove that you're innocent, otherwise you are guilty. And I think that has done more damage to Pakistan than any other, any other thing I can think of. The way competition, the way businesses are handled in Pakistan, there is a perception. For example, I was reading these questions and the word set is used like a four letter word. So, I mean, some people think that being a set or an entrepreneur is, is a bad thing. Now, I, I think that reflects the mindset of our society in general. And who has brought it to this point? Mukesh Ambani is a hero in India, but here the businessmen, everyone is trying to find out their tax returns, if they've done anything which is illegal. And I mean, I, I've, I've looked at businesses in Bangladesh and India. If they went through the same scrutiny as in Pakistan, I think 90% would fail. If you look in Europe, now there are almost 500 uh, family businesses that are contributing and working. In Pakistan, we started with 20, 22 families and that has gone up to 31 or 32. And I'm just referring to the PIDE report that they have published. I also agree that the state culture connotation is derogative and perhaps it's not the right thing because they are contributing to the economy. I, I, economies flourish, I mean, only when businesses flourish, it's vice versa. So how do they flourish? It's you generate jobs and you, you generate economic activity. These are the two things. 
how have you helped the economy while you have grown big? Apart from paying taxes, apart from generating employment, in terms of industry, what are the actions that were taken? In terms of research and development, what is the innovation brought? And it's not just I'm talking with reference to SAP Group, I'm talking about the family businesses, how have they contributed to this? This is. I agree uh, with uh, what Shahzad has said. Uh, I also think that, you know, I, I understand the intent behind this question. Uh, you know, why do businesses not flourish here? And, uh, and because uh, Dr. Nadeem, uh, Vice Chancellor of Pied was very, I understand the intent that he had behind it. And as you said, I mean, many in the audience could say that the answer to this is that they do flourish. You know, we have Shahzad Sahab, some people would say, Saif Group, you know, many groups that have done very well. So, um, so clearly, uh, you know, businesses have flourished. I think what uh, he had in mind was that, uh, why do we not have many more multi-billion dollar Pakistani companies that are global brands or have an international presence or have succeeded outside Pakistan. And, um, you know, businesses can't flourish if the economy doesn't flourish. So, in effect, you're asking why hasn't the economy flourished? And that's a long, long, long discussion. But, um, you know, and, and because we have, I'm assuming we have uh, a lot of economic students here. If, if from a, if you look at it from an economics point of view, for a business to be big, you need either a big domestic market or you need a big, or you need to serve an export market. And uh, we have big businesses in Pakistan. You know, I'll give you, for example, Barrier Town is a very big business in a very big domestic sector. But generally, Pakistani, uh, and generally also, if you look at uh, the example of other countries, businesses that venture overseas are usually domestic champions. So they dominate Japan first, and then they go outside Japan. In Pakistan, the domestic champions have chosen not to go, not really to venture abroad. And this is really uh, as a result of the incentives that they are faced with. And, uh, and, and, you know, you have to keep in mind that entrepreneurs or businessmen want to make money uh, with the least amount of risk, and maybe least amount of effort, and maximum return. So because of the structure of our economy and because of the competitive advantages that the local companies, domestic companies, companies like mine and Shahzad Sahabs and others have, it suits them to serve the domestic market. And so they don't go abroad. The other issue is that in general, uh, and I'm not an expert on this, I don't know why, but in Pakistan, uh, businesses or businessmen do not want to structure business activity within, the, within a corporation, within a business. You would rather take an informal, and maybe it's because it's too regulated, maybe tax issues, documented issues, so when there is a disincentive to corporatize, and, and so naturally you don't have as many big companies uh, as, you, as you should. Um, I think these things are changing, you know, family businesses, as Shahzad said, it's become like a pejorative, but uh, keep in mind Pakistan is now se about 75 years old. So we are, this is now the third generation. And uh, globally also, you know, in the United States in the late 1800s, early 1920s, till the, around the 1920s, the so-called Gilded Age, you had lots of family businesses. You had the Rockefellers, you had the, you know, uh, uh, Carnegie, et cetera, et cetera. And they, they, so they evolved into companies that were then managed professionally. Ownership was more widespread. So beyond the third generation, it's usually very difficult for a family business to continue and it starts to divide or it will just go away. So we may see that, we are already seeing that happening and we may see it uh, hap happen uh, further. Uh, just, two, just two last points. You, why, you know, why have Pakistani 
firms not uh, gone abroad in my view again because they make money easier in pakistan and uh, you know what when, when i have i have been thinking what are the competitive advantages of a pakistani firm of a of a large pakistani group let's say a saf group for this for the sake of uh, one is your access to human capital you have the ability to put together a management team to shahzad sahab jisko bhi phone karenge that gentleman will generally or lady will be generally ready to work for him whereas if you are new they won't even answer your call and this happens everywhere but to a i think the phenomenon is stronger here secondly is your access to uh, financial capital uh, which means bank loans uh, if you do if you have not uh, if if you are a first timer in business no bank in this country is going to give you a loan but if you are an established uh, uh, group you have a privileged access to them not only to bank loans but even to customer advances and you know there are companies in the real estate sector who without owning the land customers are willing to give them money now if you look at both of these uh, competitive advantages these don't translate well across a border i will not have these advantages if i go and go to china or malaysia so so why should i it's not an incentive for me to uh, you know uh, and then but keep in mind that these do these do translate well across industries so one of the questions was why do we have these conglomerates well because if shahzad sahab can put up a good team in textiles then he can put up a good team in banking in dairy and xyz and you know if i can make more money selling biscuits and milk to pakistanis why should i make uh, you know electronic items for uh, for the japanese market so these are all incentives that we have to we have to look at finally you asked if uh, what have we done for the industry you know my my group uh, our manufacturing is largely in khyber pakhtunkhwa so which is an area which is uh, you know where there is very little industry so when you set up industry you know some of our companies are now have been operating for three generations and there are villages from which two three generations of family members have gone to work in that industry because there is no other industry uh, in, in that country in that uh, in in that uh, area and uh, you know in terms of research and development i am uh, alhamdulillah proud to be associated with sky electric you know sky electric was a very big risk that ashar aziz took no idea that the product will even work or it will sell or how it will be uh, uh, so you know when you say there is no innovation i think that's also uh, not not wholly correct sorry एंड सॉरी मुझे ये भी कहा गया है कि मैं इंग्लिश उर्दू दोनों में स्विच करूं और सो फिव मी इफ वी हैव नॉट बीन ओनली वी बीन ओनली टॉकिंग इन इंग्लिश आप जब ये बात करते हैं कि हम बाहर जाने का इंसेंटिव नहीं है रिटर्न ऑन एक्विटी हमें यहाँ पे मिल जाता है सो जाते हैं हम वहाँ पे जाना हमारे लिए इंसेंटिव नहीं रखता तो इजेंट इट कि फिर तो हमें पाकिस्तान को जो भी हम सर्विसेज कर रहे हों चाहे वो हम मैन्युफैक्चरिंग कर रहे हों उसमें फिर हमें एक्सपोर्ट पे तो हमें खुद उन्हें अप्रोच करना चाहिए ना आप जाएं या ना जाएं दे शुड बी ऑफर इज आर हमारी क्या प्रोडक्ट्स इतनी अच्छी हैं हम ग्लोबली इतने कम्पटिटिव हैं कि हम सिर्फ अपनी डोमेन में रहते हुए पाकिस्तान में रहते हुए कम्पीट कर सकेंगे विल दैट बी द राइट अप्रोच फॉर बिजनेस कि जी हम वी आर फाइन हेयर बिकॉज वी आर हैविंग एक्सेस टू फाइनेंस हमें अच्छा यहाँ पे बैंकिंग को सपोर्ट मिल रहा है हमें यहाँ पे प्रॉफिट्स भी बहुत अच्छे मिल रहे हैं क्या हमारी प्रोडक्ट्स उस मैार की होंगी जो बाहर होती हैं बिकॉज जब हम कंपटीशन की बात करते हैं इट्स नॉट अबाउट कंपटीशन इट्स अबाउट बिजनेसेस बिकॉज मैं बहुत ज़्यादा ये समझती हूँ कि कंपटीशन कहना जो है वो है फेयर प्ले पर बिलीव करना है बेसिकली यू आर फॉर फेयर प्ले एंड देट यू वॉन्ट द बेस्ट प्रोडक्ट एट द मिनिमम कॉस्ट तो एफिशिएंसी ब्रिंग इन करना ही कंपटीशन का मकसद होता है ज़्यादा प्लेयर्स आए बेहतर प्रोडक्ट मिले बेहतर तो क्या ये आप इस अप्रोच के साथ हम ग्लोबल इसमें प्रोडक्ट वाइज भी कंपीट कर सकेंगे हमारी क्वालिटी होगी एक ये इम्पॉर्टेंट आस्पेक्ट दूसरा आप मैं जब स्मान ये बात एड्रेस कर लें तो आपके साथ ही मैं ये सवाल करना चाहूँगी आपका नॉलेज प्लेटफॉर्म है एंड आई रेड दैट आपकी सिंगापुर बेस्ड कंपनी है एंड माशाल्लाह इन इन डिफरेंट बैंकॉक में भी आप हैं और चाइना में भी हैं इंडिया में भी आई वाज नोटिसिंग तो आपने स्टार्ट कैसे किया और 
आप कैसे समझते हैं कि हम बियॉन्ड गोइंग बियॉन्ड द जोग्राफिकल बाउंड्रीज कारोबार में कैसे पाकिस्तान का इमेज भी बेहतर होता है और हाउ यू कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट टू द इकोनॉमी जी उस्मान फर्स्ट आई जस्ट वॉन्टेड टू अंडरस्टैंड थिंक फॉर एग्जाम्पल जी मैनी एरियाज जिसमें हम वी आर वेरी गुड क्वालिटी वी हैव टेक्सटाइल वी हैव अदर एरियाज सो एंड इन अदर एरियाज वी कैन इम्प्रूव सो और यू नो जैसे आप बता रहे हैं नॉलेज बेस्ड इकोनॉमीज आई टी सेक्टर दैट्स अ कम्प्लीटली डिफरेंट एरिया इज नो रीज़न वी कॉन्ट वी विल हैव टू स्टार्ट फ्राम सम लो बेस लेकिन ऑलरेडी हमारे टेक्सटाइल्स मैं टेक्सटाइल का एग्जाम्पल देता हूँ इज अ वेरी स्ट्रॉग इन टर्म्स ऑफ क्वालिटी वी आर वी आर वेरी मच अप देयर हम पहुँचे तो हैं टेक्सटाइल में मगर हम अभी भी पीछे हैं अपने रीजनल इसमें अगर देखा जाए तो उसमें क्वालिटी मैं सिर्फ जी क्वालिटी की क्वालिटी की उस पर जी सॉरी जी सो आई थिंक दैट यू नो वे पाकिस्तान इज नाउ बिन इन एग्जिस्टेंस फॉर मोर देन सेवेंटी ईयर्स एंड आई नो देर फ्यू पीपल इन टेक्सटाइल सिटिंग बट वी गिवन इट अ चांस वी गिवन टेक्सटाइल्स अ चांस and over 70 years uh, the industry has not really grown to a substantial extent if you look at bangladesh uh, they without the cotton base uh, they have done much better than we have so at some stage you need to start asking look we are poor country every single country that has progressed has done it by selecting certain industries yes that they promote even the united states which is generally a very open country protects for example the defense uh, industry the high tech and microelectronics and industry now they are trying to carve back the chip industry into the united states so every country selects certain areas where they want to put their investment in and progress so i would suggest that look whether it's the government's fault or the industry's fault it doesn't really matter but over 70 years we have heavily subsidized certain industries and they haven't really produced the kind of impact that even bangladesh has managed to create so we should look to new industries and the biggest opportunity today the biggest opportunity by far is it we are suited for it we don't need to produce anything here it's a huge sector we've had already successes like kareem and so on that have become um, unicorns overseas but with the pakistani software base so first of all the government has to select what industries are we going to promote and which industries will give us the fastest growth and the biggest amount of capital and the biggest uh, positioning on the world stage so by far it's the it industry but then how do we do it first of all our education system first of all our mental model you know i mean i'm i i'm now introducing computer science program we have 400000 students who come into edu- into higher education every year do you know how many of them in it it's only about 25 to 35000 it's growing quite fast but it's a very small percentage then now we introducing computer science in schools the mental model of principals and parents is doctor lawyer and civil engineer it's an outdated model this is not what's going to make you succeed in the future it's not that they won't be doctors they won't be lawyers they won't be civil engineers but the growth is in data analytics people who know it not necessarily programmers and then of course programmers as well so we need to fix it at the at the school level we need to fix it at the university level we need to provide the proper incentives to it sector and we need to say this is a sector that we are going to bank on look at india look at what india has done it's not done it on the on the strength of its textiles industry it's done it on the strength of its it industry after that other sectors have kicked in so we welcome textiles to come behind us not in front of us don't take up so much space let's get rid of the subsidies for textile and if they can't do it themselves then let's move on to other sectors you know chumpeter said you know this is all about industries die and industries grow and i'm sorry to say we have to pick the right industry my one vote would be it we have the talent we have the potential all you young people are sitting here are you going to become textile sets how many of you have ambitions to become textile sets or or that you're going to produce more um, spinning wheels or whatever whatever is used in textiles and how many of you have aspirations 
that with some kind of coding, some kind of analytics, you can make a career for yourself. So I want to take on this issue and say that, look, we have to select. And we have to select the industries that will work. So what are they? <coughs> Shahzad, I would, I would certainly request you yeah. to respond to this. But before that, when you talk about prioritization of industries, yes, we don't have it. That's one of the main causes that we have not been heading in one direction. We don't have a direction. Nobody sets a direction. But it doesn't have to be one industry at the cost of the other. They can, you can streamline more, you can have more areas of priorities. So Shazad, how would you? So I think <clears throat> it's very important uh, when you know the mindset I talked about, there is a perception in Pakistan about that textile industry is subsidized. Now I can ask you, what is the subsidy textile gets? You will not be able to tell me because there is none. May I? Actually, I would just let me finish, Shahid. You see, the problem is that there is so much negative propaganda in this country. Actually, if, if I import coal from South Africa and make electricity in my own plant, it's half the price of the national grid. So why is the national grid so inefficient? That is the main question. And then they put headlines in the newspaper, subsidies of 10 rupees. Well, your cost of production is four times, then you have to give subsidies. Since somebody doesn't pay the bill in Quetta or Sakhar and we have to subsidize and we are, we, we, are, we are saying that we are subsidizing the industry. And I think the main issue is that why are we saying that we cannot, should not do this and do that? Do we know that Pakistan is the fourth largest cotton producer in the world? We want to shut down the entire textile industry and also shut down entire agriculture with it. No. So I think yeah. there is no competition. It's not a zero-sum game. What we have to talk about is the enabling environment in Pakistan. In the year 1991, I did a transaction where I raised 100 million US dollars in equity financing. In 1991, today nobody will touch 1 million dollars of equity financing. Why don't we see the reasons what has happened? Yes. We can talk about all these things, you know, everybody wants to go into IT, it looks very nice. You can play ping pong in the office. We see Google, you know, pictures, people can have massage rooms in the office. The reality is sadly very different. Yeah, uh, and, and if I may, uh, why that there should be prioritization of industries, manufacturing should remain the core focus, along with services maybe on the I mean, IT side. Why I say so, that you have to economy where boost lana hai, job employment lani hai, and as big a size as Pakistan, you can't do without the manufacturing sector. Or the reason we have not done well is because we have not focused on it. There prioritization be prioritization in our taxation. Is tarah hoti hai, ki it's more a tool of recovery. It is never a tool to regulate industries as per the prioritization policy. I think that is also creating an entry barrier for many businesses. This is acting as an impediment for carrying out that. Uh, sorry, Shaza sahab, I have to say that you have a planning commission ke member. And we have seen a lot of that planning is not there, but action is not there. So how would you comment on the questions that have been just discussed as well? Gee, I'd like first to start with Mr. Mahboob. He has repeated the mantra which everybody says, subsidies, subsidies, subsidies. Reality is that the tariff, industrial tariff, contains a cross-subsidy to uh, other sectors, non-productive sectors. Your gas pricing to non-productive sectors has been kept so low while the uh, rest of the economy, the industrial or the economy that generates wealth and employment has been charged higher. Uh, where is the subsidy? If the textile sector asks for um, removal of cross subsidies, because you can't export taxes, you can't export cross subsidies. We do not compete in the Pakistan market. We compete in the international market. So if you have to compete in the international market, your cost base, uh, especially for the items uh, that make the bulk of your cost, have to be internationally competitive. Otherwise, uh, uh, you know, you can't compete and therefore that's the end of it. So there is no subsidy. Uh, this narrative has gone on for far too long and the negative press about this is what has held Pakistan back. 
Spon uh, so, sorry. Now, the uh, one thing that uh, has been missing in the narrative here is that uh, why are companies, businesses do not grow beyond a certain size? Uh, there are two, 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 three things that I think are key. Number one is that the government crowds out the private sector. 80% plus of all loans of all uh, go to the government. Then again, the government's footprint in the economy is about 70%. Um, where is there room for private sector companies to grow or to... Um, then thirdly, we have cultural, social, and religious issues. Uh, we have issues which uh, sort of make us content with whatever we have. We don't have the hunger. Uh, that hunger is missing in Pakistan, um, which makes companies grow. Uh, now, I mean, it's well and good to say that internationally, 65% of the world economy is uh, uh, sort of dominated by family firms. But please look at the structure of those family firms. Those family firms uh, have employed uh, managers who are professionals. What is the problem in Pakistan? In Pakistan, the problem is that uh, uh, the, the, there is a lack of trust. There is a lack of trust in all, uh, in, uh, all uh, sectors in all, at all levels. So unless you are able to have a number of uh, directors or uh, professionals running your businesses and you can trust them, you will not grow beyond what you can control yourself. Um, and part of this is stemming uh, from uh, the, uh, this, uh, uh, this idea that uh, um, your, uh, I'm sorry, I lost, uh, but uh, again, um, there are many other factors feeding into this. First of all is our dismal savings rate. We are a consumption-based society. Uh, in order for uh, capital generation or capital access, you need to have a pool of capital. Where is the pool of capital? Uh, why is it that India has a savings rate of over 30% and our savings rate is 11%, I believe, now? Um, and then, again, uh, we, uh, whatever we've done, we have not built systems. Um, without systems... Um, the personal touch remains supreme. Uh, and uh, a system uh, will allow you to grow to sizes uh, which are not uh, you know, dependent on your direct intervention. But we really do not have systems. Uh, just as a matter of interest, um, our biggest firm, exporters, um, say is about $500 million. And on number 50, you have a firm which only exports $10 million. So we don't have many firms that, uh, uh, and another statistics is that uh, a average Bangladeshi firm that exports, it's three times the size of the average Pakistani firm that exports. Um, and uh, these are all manifestations of uh, the cultural issues that we carry. And part of that, as uh, uh, our friends have uh, espoused, is that uh, the lack of trust also translates into uh, NAB and uh, the problems uh, that our uh, so-called states face. Because if you make money, it is not considered kosher. You. Uh, so, Usman, you wanted to add something? Ji, I just wanted to say that IT or textiles. And the other thing is that, uh, you know, a lot of these, if you want to call us Sates or Mia Saiban or Khan Saiban, whatever it is, you know, they're sharp people. And the recent devaluation over the last one and a half year has made people realize, people with very big businesses, that you need to have 
کہ آپ کے پاس انلیس کوئی ڈالر ریونیو اسٹریم نہ ہو تو دیٹ بزنس از ناٹ ریئلی ورتھ مچ تو آپ دیکھیں لاٹ آف پیپل ان دا ٹیکسٹائل ان ادر ایریاز آر ناؤ لوکنگ ایٹ سروسز بزنسز آئی ٹی بزنسز کنسلٹنگ بزنسز نہیں وہ تو میں نے شروع وہ تو میں نے شروع میں کہا جی کہ آپ وہ انسینٹیو جب نہیں ریموو کریں گے بٹ دی ادر ایڈوانٹیج آف آئی ٹی ایس کے اس میں یو ڈونٹ نیڈ مچ فرام دا گورمنٹ دیکھیں نا وی آر این اینرجی اسٹارڈ کنٹری اس میں دیر از نو مینوفیکچرنگ پلس واٹ یو نیڈ ایز فار ایز آئی از یو نو اب انڈیا میں دا فرسٹ آئی آئی ٹی وہ سیٹ اپ ان انڈین انسٹیٹیوٹ آف ٹیکنالوجی دا فرسٹ آئی ایم آئی آئی ایم وا سیٹ اپ ان دا ارلی نائنٹین سکسٹیز سو دے ڈو ہیو اے لاٹ آف ایڈوانٹیجز اوور آس اینڈ انشاء اللہ وی ول وی ول کیچ اپ لیکن اب یہ بھی یاد رکھیں نا جی کہ اسلام آباد پاکستان نہیں ہے یو نو دیر آر پیپل ان دا ادر پارٹس آف دا کنٹری ہو مے ناٹ ہیو دا اسکیلس کہ دے کین اسٹریٹ اوے گو ٹو آئی ٹی سو یو کانٹ کل دی ایگزٹنگ بزنسز کے لیے ہم نے فیوچر کیونکہ اس طرف اس طرف جانا ہے سو دیٹس جسٹ جسٹ ون یو نو ون کامن دیٹ آئی وانٹ ٹو میک آئی ڈونٹ وانٹ ٹو یو آر پرفیکٹلی رائٹ اٹ ناٹ اے زیرو سم گیم بٹ اٹس این ایٹی ٹوینٹی گیم اف یو گیو مور منی ٹو دا ملٹری یو ہیو لیس منی فار سول ایکسپینڈیچر اف یو اسپینڈ مور منی آن سول سروینٹس یو ہیو لیس منی آن ڈیولپمنٹ اف یو گیو مور منی ٹو ون انڈسٹری یو ہیو لیس منی فار دی ادر سو اٹ مے ناٹ بی a zero sum game but you have to pick where your winning is going to take place and i'm going to shift my argument from subsidies maybe you're right i'm not a subsidy expert but if we were sitting in bangladesh today and somebody were to ask what is the story of textiles in bangladesh over the last 50 years of bangladesh i don't think people would be saying We are, we are not getting enough subsidies or eliminate taxes or eliminate cross subsidies or the government is holding us back, right? Their story would be, you know, I had no money, I had nothing, I went abroad, I, I started doing some outsourcing of uh, making uh, t-shirts and then that business grew and I got more business and so on. In other words, the narrative in Bangladesh, which I've been, I've been there many times, my family lives there and I've, we've got businesses in textiles, The narrative is not that the government is holding us back. It is that we as entrepreneurs went forward and brought it back and then we fixed government. So you have to look at what industries are doing that. Today, like if you look at us, we produce our software here, but we've been doing it since 2000. And the first time we stepped into the Pakistan market was in 2014. So it took us 14 years to come back to Pakistan actually and look at it as a market. So, In other words, there's an entrepreneurial spirit that is often a spirit that is driven by necessity. If you have a capture of, uh, of resources, whether it's banking resources, subsidies, land, you know, it's a complex thing. It's not just about clear-cut subsidies. Your incentive to go overseas will be less. So I do believe what has happened here is that there are the government, very bad, the anti-business for sure. The big businesses are mostly sitting at the top of the pyramid, whether it's land, textiles, or whatever. They're not really incentivized, but now, Saif Saab, you're absolutely right. The exchange rate has brought this reality that maybe all this, what we have created, is not as valuable. So I think we need to look at industries and look at industries not to give them subsidies, but to give them inspiration and whatever minimal support they need so they can spread their wings as entrepreneurs, just as the people of Bangladesh have done. Uh, may I just... Uh, <coughs> the difference between Bangladesh and Pakistan is that the footprint of the government over there is purely on the side of regulation, rather than being in business themselves. Uh, that is the real difference between Bangladesh and Pakistan. In Bangladesh, uh, you know, their uh, tariffs and so on do not carry these cross subsidies or these, uh, so they, th their inputs are at, uh, you know, whatever the cost is, uh, not like Pakistan, where we have sort of uh, made everything so complicated and so, um, I mean, the other day there was a tweet by the 
power secretary that he is using tariffs to equalize wealth in Pakistan. I mean, sure. Uh, uh, interesting things, but one thing that I may add, and I feel that most of the participants also hinted at that as well, two industries that have flourished a lot. One is industry of accountability, and then the other is regulation. With these two industries there, businesses find it really difficult to flourish. I mean, would you like to share your experiences so that it can highlight how these have interfered? Thank you. I, I just, you know, I think we, f this subject is very interesting. For example, if in Pakistan we had no PIA, no steel mill, no power sector, you know, everything is in the private sector. So if you looked at the income of people and you taxed people according to the income which we don't do, and you have a lower tax rate, actually we will have a higher tax revenue. The problem is the industrial growth or the growth of any businesses is also stifled by the multi-layered taxation. I a small example. If I want to buy a laptop computer, and I paid cash 100,000 rupees. But if I want to buy it in Nishad Chunia, I'll have to take 10% withholding tax and 17% sales tax. That I have to add to the price. Nobody is going to pay for it. And if you look at even, you know, very interesting, this super tax, the way it is calculated, when Mr. Ishaq Dar makes an announcement in the assembly, we'll say, Ji, 50 crore rupees se upar aapko tax, super tax lag jayega. Nobody understands that if you have a capital of 100 billion and you make a profit of 50 crores, you should be fired rather than, you know, saying that you are making an enormous profit. There is no correlation between capital and... So it, what, what the message the government is going, giving is that making a profit of 50 crores plus is a bad thing. And I think the whole narrative in Pakistan has to change. Even the private people like us, Mahbub Sahib, are all saying this, this, you are getting it, you know, we are getting it, we should do this. The whole narrative is flawed. But this is a very good thing. We are not going to do it. We are not do We are not going to do it. We are not going to do it. We so this narrative and these are the two of them. You know what Bangladesh is in Bangladesh. No bank doesn't want money from anyone. The state has said, close your eyes and default. Grow. Go and 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 go. Even today, Bangladesh in Europe has a status called EBA. EBA means everything but arms. They can export everything in the world. They don't want a certificate of origin. वो कहते हैं हम गरीब हैं अरे भाई आप कहाँ से गरीब हैं आपकी तो जीडीपी इंडिया से भी ज़्यादा है सक्सेसफुली उन्होंने ये काम किया है वो अपने आप को गरीब पोट्रे करते हैं हम लोग तो आपस में लड़ रहे हैं हम कहाँ से तरक्की करेंगे हम तो यहाँ टैक्स लगा लगा के खत्म कर देते हैं जो आता है गोरा उसको हम एयरपोर्ट पर रिसीव करते हैं जो फॉरेन इन्वेस्टर आता है उसके लिए हम एक कॉन्फ्रेंस करते हैं जो लोकल आता है उसको नैब के दफ्तर भेज देते हैं ये कहाँ से करेंगे? मुझे तो पता ये ये हमारी तो गुलामाना ज़हनियत ख़त्म ही नहीं हुई। आपने कभी सुना है कि कोई लोकल इन्वेस्टर को इंसेंटिव दिया हो यहाँ सऊदी को देते हैं, यहाँ चाइना के अब तो को दे रहे हैं, उनके लिए लाल कालीन बचा रहे हैं, किसी को पता नहीं है, वो क्यों यहाँ इन्वेस्ट करेंगे � in Balochistan, why do we need to invest in the outside? Why did our capital market get so small? Why did you get so small? 30 years ago, it was bigger. So, we are not reflecting on ourselves. There is no problem in Pakistan, there is no corruption. In every country, there is a certain level of corruption in every country. There is no corruption in India, there is no corruption in China, there is no Bangladesh. I think that in Pakistan, Bangladesh and India are more than that. We have made it a main focus. If we want to flourish, and these businesses and family, when they became a size, they have no choice they have no choice but to professionalize. You don't want to go there. That's the problem. Shazad, while I agree with most of the things that you have said, and I, I think maybe none would disagree, but there's one thing that as a regulator, what I notice, in the best of the businesses, the biggest of the businesses, to them cornering the market, colluding or cartelization, 
is not considered a wrong. You know, this is visibly an anti-competitive. I'm not talking any about one particular industry. I can name sugar, cement, telecom. You come across all these industries. So, and then on the other hand, unfortunately what happened was that the government is supposed to be a competition advocate, you know? This competition commission had to do that policy advocacy, I agree, but basically we are pro-business. We want businesses to grow. We are not against making profits. It's just the abuse of the power that we were restricting. It's, it's, it's the unfair play that we had to check. But what we notice in all this process is that humne to kimat kam hi ki na. Humne to mil kar ke ek bhai chara hi kiya na. So this concept is not changing. Ji ji ji. Main aapko ek industry ka batau jo shayad aap bhool gayi. Dekhi ye jo cement hai ya polyester hai ya cartel banate hain. Bilkul galat hai. Main isse 100% aapse agree karta hu. But ek industry yahan par ek ek competition aur bahut interesting hai. Wo banking hai. Wo main abhi usko likha hua tha ki wo to mast. 20 saal se 20 saal se aapne kisi ko banking license nahi diya. Yes. आप किसी को बैंकिंग लाइसेंस दें और इतना रेगुलेटेड है ये कि आप तो कहते हैं ये जो सीईओ है बैंक का ये तो बिल गेट्स भी नहीं बन सकता पाकिस्तान के किसी बैंक का सीईओ यहां तो खैर बिल गेट्स किसी नॉर्मल कंपनी का भी नहीं बन सकता क्योंकि वो बी ए पास नहीं है <laughs> तो यहां पहले आपने किसी कंपनी का सीईओ बनना हो चाहे आप पच्चीस अरब का प्रॉफिट कर चुके हैं चाहे आपके पर उस कारोबार को जानते हैं लेकिन पब्लिक लिमिटेड कंपनी का सीईओ बनने के लिए आपको एक इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ कॉर्पोरेट गवर्नेंस में तीन दिन का जाके कोर्स करना पड़ता है तो हर आदमी ने अपनी टेरिटरी बना ली है स्टेट बैंक ऑफ पाकिस्तान जो है वो नया बैंक नहीं आने देता अमेरिका में पंद्रह हजार बैंक है तो यहाँ क्यों नहीं हो सकते कॉम्पिटिशन अलाउ कीजिए कॉम्पिटिशन विल ब्रिंग द रेट्स डाउन लॉस को ठीक कीजिए रिकवरी के लोग हर एक को लैंड करेंगे स्टेट आके सत्तर आपसे बोरोइंग कर लेता है उनको जरूरत क्या किसी को लैंड करने की Uh, uh, I, uh, Free market is the way to go. There is no other option. Yes, agreed. Can I just can I just this yes. Swan? Yes, you uh, thing, and then we'll take the questions uh, from the audience. You are saying that the cartels, uh, cartels, uh, cartels, banti hain. So we are. This is an economics audience. So I say every time that people will do what they have an incentive to do. They can. In Pakistan, se bahar log cartels agar bana sakte hain, they do make it. and you know let's uh, let's give the example of the cement industry it's well known that there is a cartel yes and why should they not do they are doing it for in the interest of their shareholders unhone pakistan ke khatir kaam nahi karne inflation ko kam nahi karne wo wo karenge jo unki shareholders ke liye now this is the job of the regulators to uh, when we are all talking about it on uh, that it exists and you have remained uh, you know uh, head of the you've remained the competition czar or zarina of pakistan so why why aren't we not doing anything and i'll give you an another another example ji when we started sky electric ye it was the first solar company that was uh, installing solar systems on a large scale hame ek din alternative energy development board se bilkul hamara kaam hi unhone stop kar diya ki hum aapke us waqt hamare koi 600 customer the कि हर कस्टमर को फ़ोन करेंगे और उनसे पूछेंगे कि आपको कोई मसला तो नहीं है तो अच्छा अगर मैं अगर मेरी कंपनी होती कि मैं घरों में जनरेटर लगाता जी छोटे डीजल के या पेट्रोल के तो कोई मुझसे पूछता भी नहीं सो यू सी और यू आई दर हैव टू मच रेगुलेशन और यू हैव टू लिटिल रेगुलेशन वे वे इफ यू एंड एंड द वे टू फाइंड इट आइडेंटिफाई इट इज़ कि वो कौन सा सेक्टर है विच इज़ कंसिस्टेंटली प्रॉफिटेबल बट विच हैज़ नॉट सीन मार्केट एंट्री फ्राम आउटसाइड पाकिस्तान अब देखें ना अगर सीमेंट इतना प्रॉफिटेबल है तो बाहर से, से कुछ साल है? पहले लफार आए थे लेकिन जनरली नहीं आते हैं सो दिस टेल्स यू दर समथिंग इज ब्रोकन एंड द रेगुलेशन नीड्स टू बी फिक्स दैट्स ट्रू बट वॉट आई एम सेंग एज के दर इज नो डिनाइंग द फैक्ट कि इंटरनेशनली दे ऑल कार्टिलाइज जब ये बात करते हैं कि जी पाकिस्तान में तो ये लॉ ही नहीं आना चाहिए था अभी तो हम सौ साल पीछे हैं तो हमारा तो जवाब ये होता था कि भाई इट्स अबाउट बिहेवियर बिहेवियर अक्रॉस द ग्लोब इज़ द सेम तो ये हर जगह होना चाहिए फेयर प्ले इज़ द नीड ऑफ द टाइम लेकिन ये कहना मैं सिर्फ ये बात हाई करना चाहती हूँ कि लास्ट टाइम भी हमारा एक बड़ा इंटरेस्टिंग सेशन था जिसमें था रेगुलेटरी स्लच के ऊपर तो मैंने कहा था यार ये रेगुलेटरी स्लज की जब आप बात करते हैं तो उसमें एडुडिकेटरी स्लज ना भूलें बिकॉज हम अगर कार्टेल्स बस्ट करते जा रहे हैं और अनवेल करते जा रहे हैं और इन सारी इंडस्ट्रीज में अनवेल करना भी ये दे आर वेरी पावरफुल पीपल सो 
that unveiling is not just getting its recognition that we have busted those cartels and the judicial review is not coming. So there are a lot of challenges that we will talk about, but there should be, I think, a recognition that competition is good and we should refrain from these practices. We can't justify this as we say that if there are cartels out there, we can do it here too. This is, I mean, I, you can have your view. Obviously, all businesses are doing it for profit, for higher and increased profit. But there are certain values we subscribe to. And um, I, I, I would like to stop here and ask questions from the audience as we have less time. Uh, yes, please. हेलो मैडम मेरा कोई इंट्रोडक्शन नहीं मैं तो देहात गांव से आया हूँ बिजनेस बिजनेस मुझे ज़्यादा पता नहीं है लेकिन इतना पूछूंगा कि ये सारे बिजनेसमैन शायद बैठे हुए आप लोगों को फेवर चाहिए रियासत से या लेवल प्लेइंग फील्ड चाहिए दूसरी बात मेरा दूसरा सवाल ये है कि रियासत या खसूस रियासत के वो इदारे जो वो किसी कानून को अकाउंटेबल नहीं है उनको बिजनेस चलाना चाहिए और उस इदारों के बिजनेस चलाने की हमारे मुल्क और उसकी महिषत और उसके बिजनेस पर क्या असर आता है शुक्रिया कैन आई आस्क जी कैन आई आस्क क्विक क्वेश्चन एंड मे बी दे कैन टेक दिस टुगेदर देखिए जी मेरा बड़ा सिंपल सवाल है बिजनेसमैन एज आई लुक टू टेम ऑल ऑफ यू बेसिकली वी लाइक टू गो इन टू प्रोटेक्टेड सेक्टर्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल अभी आपके ग्रुप ने गाड़ी स्टार्ट कर दी है which is a protected sector aapke group ne ye solar wagaira protected sector the biggest thing is that is a businessman looking for protection or can you actually step out into the open competitive world iske sath sath ye cheez what new products do you develop one thing that i have seen all businesses in pakistan and i have looked at them have no budgets for r and d mujhe no in fact one of the major industries once said to me in a in a meeting i think shayad you were there too ki we don't do r and d R&D is done by those guys outside. So you guys develop no new product. You guys have very little export. In fact, I think uh, most of the people say uh, textile has some exports, but it really depends on the energy price. And the other two houses there have no exports at all. The third is a startup, so I won't talk about it. So the question is, why aren't we export driven? Secondly, why don't we develop new products? Why don't we believe in R&D? Why don't you, and third thing is why don't you believe in using the financial markets? I have heard this enough. That bank, bank, government ke loans have six, seventy percent or whatever. What about the stock market? I mean, there are two forms of financing: equity and um, and uh, banks. You guys love banks. Why? Because it's cheaper, easy to default on, or why can't you sell equity? I think these are very important questions. Please. Look, um, in Pakistan. Uh, and in any other country, the biggest success, uh, the, the driver of sex, success is entrepreneurship. Our prophet, peace be upon him, himself was an entrepreneur. So this is within our cultural and our religious DNA that entrepreneurs make businesses. I mean, Silicon Valley was started in garages and it's now become the biggest industry in the world. There are many examples like this. We have a very young population. And this population, we should be supporting this population and figuring out. And the one biggest question, if the government had to only ask one question, it should be, how can we unlock the entrepreneurship spirit of people in Pakistan? And a lot of it can come without big subsidies, without big investment. And this is where things like IT and things that are light, Sefsab, as you said, in terms of investment, in terms of regulations, these are things that can flourish in Pakistan. So I believe the number one question of the government should be how to create an unlevel playing field for the people who are entrepreneurs. The 22 families were given their chance and they did very well. But that model is over now. We don't need 22 families anymore or 31 families. We need 10,000 entrepreneurs, and that should be our goal. How do we create 10,000 entrepreneurs in this country who will take Pakistan to the next level? And they can. And most of them are probably under 30 at this stage. Should I? Should I? Should, should I? Yeah, please. Maybe I have uh, 
huge respect for Dr. Saab and of course his knowledge of economics and uh, and he's also kindly invited us. So, but uh, you know, to, again to say, ke ji, aap, why are you going into protected sectors is, you know, well, because the businessmen have an incentive to go into protected sectors, protected sectors. And the way to, uh, uh, you know, counter this is to, uh, you either do it through industrial policy, for example, in, in, uh, uh, in, uh, in Korea in the early days, they said, ke ji, if you want to, the right to manufacture cars for the domestic market, you need to export a certain amount. So there are ways that you can do it. Uh, um, you know, uh, I just want to clarify this. Solar, when we started, was not a protected sector. And we, we actually built this product. We have a 50-member 50, 50 engineering team, uh, which means soft, you know, uh, engineers power electronics, software engineers, and uh, there was no guarantee that this, when we had our initial event, when we launched in 2017, we called 500 people in Marriott Hotel, and our founder, Ashar Aziz, has been a great deal. Ashar Aziz is a founder of a company, a FireEye, which was a cyber security company, and Nasdaq was also listed. So, when we launched in that launch, we had only 500 people Sifar order hamare paas aaye the. Kisi ne bhi order nahi place kiya. To over time, phir gradually, jab unho ne iski, uh, iski utility, unko uh, andaza ho gaya ki ji, solar is the way forward. So people have, uh, you know, Dr. Saab taken risks and, and I strongly believe ki you need regulation to remove some of these things. And I also agree with Shahzad Saab ki logon ko in general kaam karne de. Uh, get out of the you know way of of businesses and generally a lot of these things will uh, uh, things will improve and and finally ji when they can jab ab hum jo family groups hain wo ab itne bade ho gaye hain ke wo capital un wo capital khud ab easily bank se nahi raise kar sakte aur wo agar stock market jayenge to agar main ceo hu aur mera beta cfo hai aur mera cousin you know, CEO hai to koi hume paisa nahi dega. So, majburan family businesses will professionalize in order to tap into capital markets and also in order to attract talent because people will not want to work for family businesses. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Mohammed Dani Al Arshad. Uh, I, have, I have a question. Uh, sir over there said that you need 10,000 entrepreneurs. Don't you think there is a domestic dilemma here that uh, when we graduate from a business school, uh, the uh, parents of the certain person who wants to be an entrepreneur, they say that you want to do this or do you want to do that? For example, you, you want to open a restaurant and they say, you will So this is a hurdle in creating a new entrepreneur. میری بی 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 باورچی بن گئی تھی پھر بعد میں میری والدہ آئی تو ان کی والدہ آئی انہیں کہیں کہ آپ کیا کام کر رہے ہیں چیز میں باورچی ہوں تو چی سے یہ میں لوگوں کو نہیں بتا سکتی نیو یارک میں ہم رہتے تھے چی سے آپ یہ کہہ دیں کہ آپ ریسٹورنٹ کھولنے کا آپ کا ارادہ ہے تو ٹھیک ہے that was accepted I think look we the biggest issue is talent and talent is not just the raw talent, but talent that is structured into uh, productive and innovative capacity. So uh, one of the things that is holding us back is that our mental model of success is a 20th century model, just like our cricket is a 20th century model. You know, we think doctor, lawyer, civil engineer, these are the kinds of things you have to go for. The mental model has to change, the education base has to change, a little bit of incentive has to be given to new companies that can flourish and go overseas very, very quickly. Because I think, Saifsaab, what you said about South Korea is very illustrative. They said you can set up an industry here provided you have certain level of exports. So the, it is clear that the industries that will succeed in the future are industries that can serve Pakistan as well as export their products. And so if we take that criteria, we develop talent properly, I'm sure that Pakistan can succeed. But it's not going to succeed simply by us fixing tariffs or levelizing subsidies or giving subsidies, but it's really by focusing on 
the uh, talent of people of Pakistan and the entrepreneurial energy that is there in this country. And we just have to channel it in the correct way. It's the lowest cost and it's the highest return. Uh, may I add something? Uh, what Mahboob Saab has said is absolutely right. Uh, what is the wealth of Pakistan is the human resource in Pakistan. What we have failed to do is to develop institutions that uh, educational institutions who turn out people who are competent and who are um, at par with the graduates, say, from India or from other places. Uh, we, last year, uh, we carried out a survey of IT uh, professionals who were being uh, uh, graduating from various universities, and we found that their level of expertise was nowhere near uh, what a graduate from any other country uh, yes. is. So what we started, and this is a private group, uh, is training fresh graduates uh, and uh, through links with uh, Singapore or uh, other places, uh, we got uh, that then developed these uh, people to an extent that uh, it hurt. It hurt us in a negative way because those graduates which we retrained found jobs abroad. So we again left with some zero. One thing before I conclude, and there was a very interesting story that Shazad had to share, but allow me to wrap up the points that I have and then we'll end it on that note. Uh, if I would just give you an overview of what are the reasons that businesses are not flourishing. Uh, we have spared banks very kindly, actually. One of the reasons is that banks are also not being innovative at all. They are not producing products. They are only relying on rent seeking. They're investing on the treasury bills and that's it. And uh, I would like to share, but this is not perhaps a forum, but I would request you all to look at the search and inspection that was carried out against banks on bidding a higher rate for uh, lending it to the government. You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised you find so much similarity out there. There's no finding yet, but it, yes. In all this, banks have a role and they are not discharging that role. That's the minimum. Two is absolutely a mindset, the approach towards it. Where have, where have we gone wrong? What is it that we have done wrong is primarily the approach questioning people who are contributing to the economic activity. That is not wrong, but you see, don't make them feel as if they are guilty because they are contributing to the economy. Third, which I also believe perhaps should have been at the top is the prioritization policy. Do we know in which direction we are heading? When you talk of entrepreneurs and the talent hunt, hunt and the dearth in talent, and the ecosystem not being there in Pakistan, any system that you, the, any setup that you would like to build, do you have the expertise? Do you have the machinery? Do you have the suppliers, distributors, customers, and all? This ecosystem doesn't exist for the businesses. Are we creating any barriers? Are there social barriers as well? And um, that's for Shazad to explain it. Very simple words, so I'll not touch that. Uh, I agree with Osman, and, and, and we cannot deny this is a reality. Businesses work for profits. So they are not uh, charitable organizations that they're first to think about others. If they will make profits, if they will generate economic activity, we are going to be beneficiaries. It's our job to rectify it, but it's important to recognize their part to the extent where the abuse is being committed. Uh, we have heard about the corruption and the, the accountability part and how the economic agenda has been corrupted on account of this corruption. I feel that corruption has corrupted the economic agenda, actually, unfortunately. But yes, uh, Shahzad, would you like to add what you feel how people are left out from participating in the whole economy? Who are those people? Okay. So I think जो एक सवाल पूछा गया था ना कि आप स्टेट से क्या एक्सपेक्ट करते हैं मेरा जवाब भी उससे कनेक्टेड है। I think state का रोल सिंपल होना चाहिए। State का रोल है लोगों को एक तालीम 
बहुत सस्ती प्रोवाइड करना गुड क्वालिटी की जिसमें स्टेट मिजरेबली फेल हो गई और यहीं से हमने एलिट कैप्चर क्रिएट किया है क्योंकि 80-90 परसेंट लोग आपके मेट्रिकुलेशन सिस्टम में जाते हैं और आप अपनी पाकिस्तान में बिजनेस फैमिली देख लें ब्यूरोसी देख लें मेरे ख्याल में अब तो मिलिट्री भी आप देख लें तो ये सब ओ लेवल और ए लेवल के बच्चे तो हमने 80-90 परसेंट लोगों को सिस्टम से बाहर निकाल दिया उसके बाद हमारा एक और बायस है जो बाहर से पढ़ के आता है जो जो बाहर से पढ़ कर आएगा वो उस पर भी हमारा बायस है कि हम स्टार्टिंग पॉइंट में ही बायस्ड हैं कि ये तो हमसे ज़्यादा काबिल है तो हम उसको भी ज़्यादा ऑप्शन दे देते हैं आप इंडिया में देखें ये सारा सिस्टम जो है वहाँ तो मैट्रिक्स ये और ए लेवल सिस्टम ही नहीं है तो जब तक आप अपने तालीम को सस्ता नहीं करेंगे और उसको लोगों के लिए अवेलेबल नहीं करेंगे ये सिस्टमेटिकली हमने 80-90 परसेंट लोगों को कंपटीशन से बाहर निकाल दिया अब आपस में जो हम 10 परसेंट रह गए हम आपस में खेलेंगे और हम मजाक करते रहेंगे और हम ये इंटेलेक्चुअल किस्म के सवाल भी पूछते रहेंगे कि जी आप प्रोटेक्टेड इंडस्ट्री में क्यों जाते हैं अरे भाई कोई गैर शरा गैर अखलाकी काम है स्टेट ने बनाई क्यों प्रोटेक्टेड इंडस्ट्री और अगर उस प्रोटेक्टेड इंडस्ट्री की ज़रूरत है तो अलग डिबेट कर लीजिए लेकिन ये कोई गाली नहीं है प्रोटेक्टेड इंडस्ट्री माइंडसेट हम लोगों का प्रॉब्लम है और पढ़े लिखे लोगों का माइंडसेट का प्रॉब्लम है ये तो वी आर नॉट टॉकिंग अबाउट अनएजुकेटेड पीपल ये जो आप यहाँ बैठे हैं पाकिस्तान इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ डेवलपमेंट इकोनॉमिक्स में ये भी एक प्रोटेक्टेड इंडस्ट्री है दिस इज द प्रोटेक्टेड इंडस्ट्री इसमें क्या कॉम्पिटिशन है तो हम इस ये प्रोटेक्टेड इंडस्ट्री अच्छी चीज़ है या बुरी चीज़ है ये अच्छी डिबेट है क्या जापान बगैर प्रोटेक्टेड इंडस्ट्री के तरक्की कर गया अमेरिका बगैर प्रोटेक्टेड इंडस्ट्री के तरक्की कर गया प्लीज डोंट गेट मी रॉन्ग मैं नहीं कह रहा कि आप गाड़ियाँ सस् वो प्रोटेक्शन दें और मेरा कोई गाड़ियों से ताल्लुक भी नहीं है डॉक्टर साहब को शायद पता नहीं आई हैव नथिंग टू डू विद कार मैनुफैक्चरिंग बट द पॉइंट इज इंडस्ट्री को देना है या नहीं देना ये स्टेट का काम है और अगर वो इस मुल्क के आवाम के लिए बेनिफिशल है तो ज़रूर दें और अगर नहीं है तो मत दें हमारा काम नहीं है ये सो इफ़ आई कैन जस्ट वन वर्ड that is what we would focus and emphasize on as aap level playing field tab create karenge jab aap maiyar ki education denge aur sare players ko us market mein participate hone denge thank you